Yoink. This is nice. I think I might keep this link. Pura does some good work. Yeah, yeah, this is going in the collection, for sure. What's up guys, Cass here from Giveaway Studios and on this one, I'm gonna show you guys how to turn these six parts that you see here into this awesome Pura Pad from Tears of the Kingdom, complete with LED light up eye on the back here with removable clock looking eye thingy, uh, removable magnetic handles on either side to be able to slide your Pixel 6 or Pixel 7 in or out with ease and then complete access to the phone, including the camera itself. Let's get it. Just grab one of these guys, like flush cutters, and just start taking out all of your support. Okay, and we're basically doing the same thing for our main body, just taking off all of our support. All right. All right, so here we go. We have our parts, left handle, right handle. It's a little snug, but eventually this stuff is gonna loosen up because the plastic's gonna grind away at itself uh, over time. So which is why the magnet holes are here. Uh, your part's gonna come pre-assembled with the magnets. So let's go ahead and uh, take this to the paint roof now. All right, so we're gonna spray all of our pieces with some filler primer, and then after we're done with that, we're gonna start sanding a little bit, get the finish that we want, and then we'll come back and start applying our top coat. So I'm gonna fast forward through those steps and catch you guys for the next one. So once all of our stuff is nice and primed, now's a good time to get a look at all of your pieces, see if there's any fuzzies that you might have missed, uh, any pieces of filament that you might not have caught on your first pass uh, doing your clean through. So that's why the primer is a good idea. So there's like a couple of fuzzies in here that I could probably get rid of that'll make my job a lot easier uh, after the fact. So do a little bit of that clean up as much as possible and then go ahead and sand down your pieces until you're satisfied and I will catch you guys for the next step. All right, so at this point, we're just going to go ahead and start putting our uh, top coats on everything and then we'll go into uh, some detail painting. All right, so with our parts all painted up, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my sword. Yeah, okay, there we go. And then obviously my eye is going to go back here. The magnets are pre-installed on your DIY kit. And if you are purchasing the STL file, you can just kind of glue this in place or uh, something like that. And so now it's just uh, painting. So I have a couple of different things here. So I have this gray here uh, that I'm going to use for this part here. Not the uh, surrounding edges, but the top piece here. I'm gonna use this kind of like tan one for all of the squiggle lines, as well as this piece here. I have this brown here for this bottom part here, uh, as well as the arrows. And the third one here, that is a brown one. So I'm gonna be doing some masking, painting that as well. And then on the inside of the grooves, like the bottom in between the tan stuff, uh, is going to be this kind of like bright orange. Uh, the light up little units, I'm gonna do this teal color as well as this nice uh, bright orange color as well. All right, so all it is is masking and painting at this point. So uh, enjoy this time lapse. Yeah. 
it's not pretty. Right? But at least my brown looks good. Quality of your masking tape matters a lot. And in this case, it definitely dulled the sheen of the metallic underneath it. And, but that's all I had on hand. Uh, rod tape stuff usually works much better. But I can at least go over uh, it with my uh, bronze profile and just kind of get some of that sheen back in there and maybe make a couple of corrections on where the brown bled a little bit, but uh, not too shabby. Uh, and then uh, as far as like extra detail is concerned, I have this uh, paint pen, orange paint pen from SIPA. And I'm going to use my orange to put that line uh, that I have on top of here. And All right, so with both of our handles complete, I'm going to do a clear coat on top of this, a matte clear coat, uh, as well as a clear coat on the body to make sure that our lovely paint job does not chip off when it rubs up on things and stuff like that. All right, so final bit of detail. Uh, I have already put my clear coat on this. I'm gonna grab this UV resin, uh, Green Stuff World. Uh, there's also another one that I use called Picasso UV resin. Links will be in the description. And what I'm gonna do is, it comes out fairly thick. and it self levels very well. So I'm gonna try to get a nice little mound on my gem and make it nice and gemmy. And as soon as I'm happy with the overall shape, All right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my UV light and cure it. Uh, that's gonna give me a nice hard shell but also look nice and shiny. So it'll actually look like a button. All right, so about 30 seconds. And as you guys can see, it's nice and shiny compared to its counterpart that's still matte. And we're good to go. So I'm gonna do that for all of my little uh, protruding button pieces so I can have like a nice little uh, detail on that. Okay, we got all of our shiny button details now, nice and protected from any scuffs. Something like that. And all that's left to do is for us to install our little eyepiece. So we're gonna go ahead and put our, yeah, in here, grab your light, put it on the, well, turn it on first, put it on the inside. There's a, a hole for it. Turn that around, and there we go. All we need to do is add our phone, and, and there it is with our Pixel 7 on the inside and our ladder eye on the back. Um, the It's a little loose inside the case, so you can definitely feel free to put a little piece of foam on the back to kind of get it not to shimmy so much. The only reason that is because the Pixel 6 is slightly larger than the 7 and I wanted this to fit at least two models of phones. I know I'm going to get a lot of requests for can it fit X, Y, and Z, but um, I can only test fit and prototype for stuff that I actually own and use because I don't want to send anyone anything too big or too small. It's just not a situation I want to find myself in. Uh, but in any case, super easy. There's magnets on the handles as well, just for extra security, but it is a fairly tight fit even without the, uh, the magnets. Uh, I can fully access my camera and all of my apps. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a shadow here in the corner and that has more to do with this being here because it kind of um, overlaps the camera hole a little bit, but that's just the way that the, the prop is designed. So there might be some other uh, units that fit within the, uh, the footprint um, of the case here. Um, I won't know until I test it out. Uh, I know that the iPhone 13 might, um, 
My girl's has a screen protector on it, on the camera bump and on the phone. So I know it makes it a little thicker than it should be. But I think without those things, it would probably fit inside of here as well. But in any case, I designed this for the Pixel 7. If you guys want to see me do anything else from this series or another, please feel free to uh, leave a message down in the comment section. And I hope this one was useful to you guys. I hope you guys learned something. This has been Cast from Giveaway Studios, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.